Good evening, everyone. Welcome. My name is Angela, and I'd like to welcome you to this community input forum for the Jones Library building project. Um, we're so happy that you joined us. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce the chair of the outreach subcommittee, Alex Lefebvre. Take it away, Alex. Great. Thank you, Angela. Um, okay, so I'd like to say thank you for those of you who are attending and welcome you to tonight's community forum on the library project. Um, before we get started, I just wanna take a minute to make sure everyone is aware of sort of where we are in terms of the overall timeline and design of the project. So in any major building project, there are typically five or six phases to the project and we're almost to the end of phase two. So the first phase uh, in most projects is program development. And the main goal during this phase is to figure out how much space you need now, how much you're likely to need in the future, how that space should be used, organized, and arranged. And so for the library, that was the creation of the building program in 2016, which was the culmination of several years of work and extensive community outreach. And so the second phase, which we're at the end of now is schematic design. And so in this phase, the design team takes the building program and then they translate it into an efficient building design. So schematic design began in 2016 as part of the grant application to the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners. And in October of 2020, the Board of Library Trustees contracted the designers again to create an updated schematic design with the primary objective of incorporating its sustainability goals, but also to include some of the feedback received from the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners, library staff, and the public since 2016. So fast forward, um, at the end of 2021, Amherst gave its overwhelming approval to move forward with the library project. And at that point, a new town committee was formed, the Jones Library Building Committee, or we say JLBC. And that committee is a town committee. It's made up of town employees, library employees, town councilor, library trustees, as well as members of the public. And the charge of this committee is to oversee the design and construction of the library project. So in the spring of this year, the town contracted an owner's project manager, Colliers, and the town contracted a designer, Feingold Alexander, to begin work on the project. So three weeks ago on May 9th, the designer began revising the schematic designs to incorporate comments received from library staff, the public, and the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners. So the design process is, as Austin likes to say, an iterative one, and we expect to see more than one set of schematic designs. We've already seen multiple sets, but we, we, we expect to continue to see more sets um, as they continue to be developed and finalized. And the outreach committee will continue to collect community feedback on the schematic design phase through July 1. So we have one month left of that. And the Jones Library Building Committee will work with the designer. Uh, they started in May through the end of July to finalize the schematic designs. And as a quick side note, there will be a second community forum on June 8th from 7 to 8.30. And the purpose of that forum is to give an overview of the public outreach that's been done to date, a review of comments gathered by the public, to review and explain the outreach process and make sure people know the various ways they can engage with the project, but also to take suggestions if people have ideas about things we might do differently. Um, so tonight, what we're doing is we're providing the first revised set of designs that were presented to the design subcommittee uh, just this last Friday on May 27th. And I believe this is a somewhat unique format that we have tonight because the design subcommittee met with the designer on Friday, where they got to ask some questions, provide initial feedback on the designs. Um, but these updated schematic designs have not yet been presented to the full Jones Library Building Committee. And we're presenting these revised schematics to the public to gather feedback and collect questions that will then be forwarded to the Jones Library Building Committee. So for this reason, there aren't a lot of us here, we don't have a quorum, but I wanna remind panelists that this is a community forum to hear from the public. It's not a meeting of the Jones Library Building Committee. Um, so Sharon's gonna go through the updated schematic designs floor by floor, and then we'll pause after each floor 
and then provide an opportunity for us to gather any questions or feedback that we'll then send on to the Jones Library Building Committee. So that's the plan. Um, and it looks like we're up to four attendees, um, which is exciting. <laughs> so um, I think if it makes sense, since Sharon will present her screen and then she, Angela, like you said, we'll invite people into the room if they have questions and maybe make it feel a little more community oriented. So I'm gonna mute myself and turn it over to Sharon. That was an excellent overview uh, of the process thus far, Alex. Thank you so much. So um, what I'm going to do is, like Alex said, I'm going to go floor by floor. And I'm going to start on the ground level. Um, and I will. I want to zoom out a little bit. I can't zoom out a little bit. So I'm going to scroll a little bit. Um, just to give you a quick, here, here's the bird's eye view. So on each floor, you will notice that there is a main staircase and the main elevator that goes up and down through all the different levels. Uh, all the spaces that are colored this aqua color, those are all, you'll see them labeled as circulation, and that's circulation in architect terms as opposed to library circulation. It's the places where people are walking. So as I, that's my, that's my quick blurb. I want to let me zoom in and I'm going to kind of going to do this section by section. Uh, so I'm going to start with I, I was calling this the after hours suite um, right here where it says rear entry. That is where people would be uh, coming in on the garden level. So in theory, they would be parking ideally in the, uh, the CVS lot and walk in this way and they would come into the vestibule. Now this. Uh, after hours suite, as I'm calling it, is, is being designed so it can be locked off during non-library hours and so that patrons can use the large meeting room, the restrooms, the Burnett Art Gallery, and this small meeting room, which is the Amherst room at night. And so what happens is the staff would close the door and lock it here. They would also lock it here so people would not be able to go up the stairs and it would be locked here. So it gives it, it gives people the opportunity to go in whichever room that they're gonna be needing as, as well as the bathrooms. Uh, regarding the bathrooms, uh, for those of you who have uh, watched some of our design committee meetings and we'll be talking about it uh, during the next building committee meeting, our goal is to have gender neutral bathrooms throughout the building. And so that that especially includes these here. This is this is the only set of bathrooms that are that, that have more than one stall in it. You'll notice as we go throughout the other uh, the other floors that those are just single room bathrooms. Um, I'm going to bring you up here now to the yellow. I'm going to show you special collections. So the architects were able to put all of special collections right in a straight line. It's all this this yellow. It's primarily in the night located in the 1928 portion of the building and then across this hallway. So you have the reading room here. This is where the, the people are going to be, the, the patrons. So there's going to be a lot of natural light going on in here. It's going to be a really pretty space. The head of special collections will be here. There's going to be a coat room, um, locker room so that people can put away their it, you know, their belongings, backpacks and things for security purposes. Over here is the special collections exhibit room. And then across the hall, we, we have, this is the staff only section. This is the staff work room. And then all of the special collection storage. So all these storage spaces are the climate controlled. Um, primarily, it'll be um, uh, compact shelving. That's the word that I want. Um, and so that's special collections over here in this pink color is technical services. So technical services, they're the ones who are responsible for stickering and cataloging, uh, putting covers on books, that kind of a thing. So they're located here, uh, beautifully because they are right next to the service entrance. This is where our UPS and FedEx deliveries will come in. It's, um, we, we, this library staff call it the barn doors. So um, 
that's, that's this existing entry right here. And then in the front of the building, in the brown uh, are the mechanical, uh, the blue is the mechanicals and the brown is the maintenance and the storage. And this is a uh, storage for the friends. Right now our, our friends store their items on, on the top floor of the library. In, in, this, uh, in these set of schematics, they are on the ground floor. That way they can store their book sale books. And then when it's time for a book sale, they just move it right into the Woodbury room and that's what they can have there. Book sales. So I'm gonna zoom back out and then I'm gonna let Alex take over and answer questions. Or collect questions, but thank you. Um, so let's, you want to stop sharing your screen? Absolutely. Then, or at least until we see. So um, I see a hand raised. Do we want to, um, since we have a relatively small, yeah, okay, there you go. So um, Adele, welcome. <laughs> if you unmute yourself, we'd love to hear your question. Hi, um, I'm Adele Gladstone Gilbert. Um, I'm on the Burnett Gallery Committee and um, I do have a master's in interior architectural design <laughs> from way back when. Um, it's a little rusty, but <laughs> um, so I have been asked by the committee to be sort of a liaison between the Burnett Committee and this whole process. Um, so um, I'm looking at where the, the Burnett is um, in the schematics. And um, uh, I personally am still feeling like it's tucked away to um, some extent um, that people coming to the library are not going to pass it, see it, um, you know, it, it, it's not going to be inviting people in unless people have the intent of going to the, a gallery exhibit, you know, something in the gallery. Um, the other thing that hasn't been addressed is storage and uh, the, um, the gallery needs storage for um, the tools that people use when artists come in and they put up their exhibits, they have to have access to a space with a ladder, um, all the hanging equipment, um, tools to use. Um, other than that, there's, there we have now, I think it's seven, um, pedestals of varying sizes. And um, there are the th three movable display walls. Um, I honestly don't know whether those belong to the library or belong to the Burnett. Um, I mean, which is all part of the library, but technically speaking, I'm, I'm not sure because they get used also um, you know, in the past, in the, on the first floor in, in exhibits. Um, so um, those are my concerns. Um, you know, if, if that's the location of the lot of the, the gallery, I mean, even coming in from that ground floor, you know, you've got to come in and go down a hallway and turn to another hallway. It doesn't seem real inviting. Um, it's better than where it is now, but not ideal, I would say. Um, and I don't know if there was discussion about incorporating the gallery with a reading room or anything like that. Um, I'm not even sure how the gallery committee feels about that, but it's something I've seen in other libraries um, and the work is certainly more vision, you know, more seen by a lot more people. Um, so um, I think that's about what I've got. 
That's Adele, thank you. That's incredibly helpful, especially as I was saying, the you know, the Jones Library Building Committee is made up of uh, many people who have not been part of this project since the beginning. Um, and so these are precisely the type of comments that we want to be gathering from people. So um, I all of those will be uh, included um, in, in what's being relayed to the design and um, Jones Library Building Committee. So thank you very much. That's great. Not to mention Super that, uh, that uh, the gallery will also need good lighting, um, you know, gallery lighting <laughs> um, right. for it to function well. Um, I, I, I wonder too, whether there could be something a window in a wall so that people, if it, if it is going to be um, along a hallway, if it could be seen from outside um, that space somehow. And I, I'm not sure how exactly that would be designed, but it was a thought. <laughs> Alex, I'd love to be able to respond to if that if that's okay. Um, maybe I shouldn't, but I think as, lo it, as long as we're not deliberating. So no, 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 no. I I just yeah. wanted to say to Adele. So thank yeah. you so much, Adele. Please keep coming to these meetings because your input is so important. Um, regarding the location of the Burnett, we have added to the list already the possibility of flipping it with where the coat closet and the restrooms are. And, mm. and the benefit of that would be it would be the first thing that people see when they enter on the ground mm. floor. Yeah. Um, so, so we're checking into that. Regarding storage, we absolutely know that. And one of the things that I should have said before I gave the tour was you're going to see a lot of this is just like the first draft and you're going to see a lot of chairs and things that are placed they're not really necessarily thoughtfully placed it's still mm -hmm. so early so that includes your storage closet that we absolutely need for the pedestals and those uh those bulletin boards um and regarding the window you know um the the only because it's on the ground floor, it's all under grade. So you yeah. wear no, it. No, I is. mean even a window to the hallway so that people yeah. going by could yes. look into the gallery. Yeah, we would right. want to work with the, the art gallery to find out the best way, the, the happy medium between how much natural light and how much wall space. And because I would think that entire wall should be made of glass so that people could see it when they were coming in. Ah, thank you. That's Adele. a thought. <laughs> thank you. Great. Thank you, Adele. And sure. Um, looks like Chris, somebody who's marked as Chris Crane, um, you're, you're in the room now and we'd love to hear from you. Yeah, my comment is uh, similar to Adele's and it's about special collections. I'm just wondering now that we've you know got special collections on the bottom floor, we've had it hidden away upstairs. I mean, it's a marvelous collection. How do we make this more available to people? How do they get directed to special collections? How do they know it's even down there? I mean, what are we doing to really you know, draw people into the fact that with these wonderful exhibits and all of this wonderful material, I'm, I'm concerned that it's being tucked away again. I know it's been down there, it has a wonderful amount of space, but you know, how do we really make it pop, really get people into that, that space? That's my question. Thank you, that's an excellent question. <laughs> Thank you. Um, does anybody else have a question? And we can obviously, if something pops up later, we, we can revisit any floor, um, but if there's no more questions for this floor, then we can go back to Sharon uh, sharing her screen and go to the next floor. Okay, here's the first floor. And um, I think I'm zoomed out as much as I can be zoomed out. And so again, here's the main staircase and the main elevator that will take you to all the floors. Uh, what you will also see here is, uh, the ex and is an existing staircase and the existing small elevator. Uh, one of the things that the building committee will be discussing on Tuesday is uh, whether or not we will be able to have that second small front elevator removed 
And when I show you to the top floor, I'll explain why, but for now it's there. And this is where the historic main staircase is. So as you walk in from Amity Street, on your right is where you would return the materials. So during when, when the library is closed, there's going to be an exterior, an external drop where you would drop it basically through the window that's there. Uh, and then inside in the vestibule, there'll be a drop into the machine that will return the items. And all of this pink space is the circulation workroom, the, the staff behind the scenes stuff. The uh, existing side entrance, the handicapped entrance that we have here, that's going to remain. That will be for our interlibrary loan Optima deliveries. So they will come in this way and you know we get between 20, 25 bins a day, and, and they will get returned here so that all the materials can be put through the, the machine. So let's say you come in and that you want to go to the children's room. I want to walk you through the children's room a little bit. It is, the children's room is on, in all of this yellow on, on the uh, left-hand side of the building. So part of it is in the old the 1928 portion and a part of it is in the the new edition uh, so here in this front room you'll have I, think I can make that bigger you'll have the head of uh, of youth services so Mia Cabana that that will be her office here uh, there will be nonfiction the nonfiction collection here there will be some computers in this room right now uh, this is the picture book room that's where the train set uh, would be in the dollhouse as you move over here, this is right now the grades five and up room. Uh, there will be fiction as well as nonfiction here. And then, so it's important to uh, understand that we will be able to separate all the different collections by age group. So there's going to be a section for board books and, you know, the little ones. And then as you move up uh, to the picture books and then you move up to the easy readers and then you move up to the chapter books. So, so that's how the layout will be. Uh, and there will be a circulation desk in the children's room, and it's a, it's a combined circulation desk as well as workroom for the staff so that they can, you know, do their off desk work, cut out the butterflies and, you know, the snowflakes, that kind of stuff. There is a family restroom here. And in the back, it will be the children's activities room. So this will be dedicated to children's programming, whether it's story time or who knows what it will be, it, it, sky's the limit. Um, so again, you don't see the furniture placed, uh, but that's what will be going on there. And there, there are doors that can be shut. That's the children's room. Now coming, uh, let me go over here to the orange space. That's the teen room. Uh, the teen room is located in what is now the stacks, the, the fiction stacks, large print is there right now. Uh, so the young adult librarian, her office is here. And as you walk in, there's as much glass as possible so we can all see what's going on. Uh, the collections are here. There's probably a, a large screen TV for gaming. And in the back of that room is all the, uh, the maker space. Uh, we, we call it the YA collaborative room. Um, it's going to be whatever the teens want it to be. Uh, as we come back out here, the circulation desk. Uh, as you walk in through the front door, See, the line of sight is beautiful. So it will literally be one of the first things that you see when you walk into the library. So it's, it won't be confusing. You just, you walk up to the circ desk and you can ask your questions. There will be a, a return drop in the desk. Um, as you keep walking towards the back, there are two toilets here. Uh, and again, there'll be gender neutral uh, and and all in here is the, the gathering space. Um, it, you know, it does say cafe, but the intent of that, the meaning is that people will bring their own food and drink. Uh, along the wall here are the self-serve holds. This is where they can, people can pick up their interlibrary loan books uh, and they can use the self-checkout if they want or if they certainly don't have to. Uh, and in the back of that space is, is all the new adult materials um, and lots of seating. This, this is really, this space is gonna be high circulation, lots of noise, uh, you know, it's gonna be high heels clomping on solid floor, uh, but it, you know, it's a place for people to meet up together and gab and eat and drink, that kind of a that kind of the vibe going on. We have the head of borrower services that's right here. And that office is there specifically to help oversee this space here. You've got the AV collection that's going on here. 
And what we've done is this space, so this is all in the new edition. It is, it's part of the adult nonfiction collection. Our nonfiction collection is so large that it did not, it did not fit all in one floor. So part of it will be here. The other part, you can either go up the main staircase in the main elevator, or you'll also be able to go up this existing staircase uh, to go up to the next floor. That is my overview of the first floor. I'll stop sharing so you can ask questions or give comments. Great, thank you. Uh, so I see Chris's hand again. So go ahead, Chris. Initially, there is some talk about an information desk. So is the circulation desk really the information desk? It's assuming that people are going to be using self-serve a lot. And I mean, that's the first port of, part, you know, point of contact. So that's sort of going to be the information desk there. Is that the thought? Uh, so there used to be an ask desk, which was right. meant for that purpose, kind of directional. But no, that ended up going away because the circ desk ended up changing locations. So the circulation desk will be the first point of contact. And if people have those kinds of uh, those kinds of questions, you know, they want to place holds for, you know, twelve books or whatever it is, you're just going to uh, send them right upstairs to the second floor. And, and I'll show you where the reference desk is there. Right. So the reference desk is on the second floor, which suggests to me that we're going to really be an information desk there because it's sort of out of the way. So it, it seems to me that we'll be doing a lot of things there by way of helping people answer various kinds of questions. So no more information desk, just us. <laughs> And also one other thing. So when Optima comes in, we take all of the totes and we move them over to the machine through those rooms and, 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 and enter them there. Okay, so there's no way to make that closer one thing to the other, I guess. Chris, that's an awesome question. So um, I wish it could be so, but what we're trying to do is we want the machine to be as small as possible. The okay. smaller the conveyor belt, the, the less like the, the fewer things that will break in the future. So, and because we needed an exterior drop as well as an interior drop, right. it really, it needed to be located in that space right there. All right. Okay. Just ask me. Thanks. Anyone else have a question on the first floor? Um, Adele? I, I, the, the rooms on the, the where, where the current fiction is, um, so that, that architecturally has a, um, uh, uh, I should know what it's called, <laughs> the high ceiling, the sort a, of a barrel, barrel vault. ceiling. A barrel vault, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm motioning with my hand, but <laughs> um, so it, will that be removed um, or that will be maintained? No, that will be maintained and you'll see it better uh, when I bring you to the second floor. Uh-huh. Um, I also, I'm looking at where the stairs are to go down. So um, again, it's not, you're not seeing the stairs um, when you come in. You're, well, you see stairs that go up, but then um, to go downstairs, you have to pass the circulation, right? And then, no, it's the it's the same staircase that um, envision. So it's it's wider than than normal. I, I'm not sure of the proper term, um, but it once you once you walk past and and get into the open area where the gathering space is, right next to the circulation desk, uh, you'll turn to your right and you will see very clearly the upstairs, downstairs, and the elevator. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Adele. Anyone else before we move on to the second floor? Okay, seeing no hands, back to you, Sharon.
You are muted. Chair. I'm muted. I'm sorry. Okay. I hate it when people do that. So on the second floor, you'll see there's a lot of purple going on. That's the adult collection. Uh, and here again, in the, in the right in the center is the main staircase and the main elevator. Here is that um, that secondary staircase. Here is that secondary elevator, and here is the main uh, historic staircase. So let me start with this, I'm not even sure what color to call it, this light burgundy. Um, this is the ESL suite. I'm gonna go in a little bit. So we have, it says ESL project group session. These are two classrooms that will be shared by our ESL department and the literacy project. Over here is uh, the coordinator's office, Lynn Weintraub's office. Uh, it's the four ESL tutor rooms. And, and here, and, and these are all going to be in glass. So there's complete visibility everywhere. Um, and and a, along here in this corridor will be uh, the collection as well as seating for reception. Uh, you know, so, so that people, when they get there early, or, um, they have a chance to go and, and talk to one another. So that's the ESL department. Up front here, this is on the right, this is currently the Amherst room. And on the left, it's currently tech services. And so these two spaces are now going to be the adult reading room. This is going to be really one of the most beautiful places in the library. Um, uh, think historic, classic woodwork. Um, I, I, it's going to be very lovely. So this is where the magazines will be kept. This is where the newspapers will be kept. It'll be a, a really nice place to just sit and, and read. This, uh, these blue colored spaces are quiet study rooms uh, for, for people to use. Uh, there will be doors on, on these rooms and they will be equipped with, with laptops so people can do whatever it is that they need to do, whether it's you know quiet study literally or group study, they can do that. You can Zoom, you can do, do interviews, um, sky's the limit. So that's what those are for. Over here, this is currently the staff lounge, the staff area. Um, it says periodical storage. That's actually gonna be moving into this reading room. So that's gonna go away. As Alex said, these designs are kind of out of date already. And so this is one of the areas that, that need to be updated and the architects are working on it. These staff are offices that are here. We're really looking for more staff sight lines over all of these wide open spaces, the adult fiction and the nonfiction that's back here. So the more that these offices are scattered throughout uh, the spaces, the better. Um, here is the administration suite. So when you come up the stairs, you're gonna see immediately the receptionist. And, and right here is the uh, reference uh, desk. Um, uh, this is the library director. This is the business manager. This is where all our financial storage, financial records will be stored, uh, a staff copy, copy center, as well as this, this hallway uh, should probably be in a different color, it, it's the hallway to go to the bathrooms for this uh, floor. And so fiction is, is over here, along with all the computers, the reference desk I pointed out. And then in the back is where it's the second grouping of nonfiction, as well as this as head of information services. So that's the reference librarian's office. Right now, this says quiet study room, but I have a feeling that might be turned into an office. There's gonna be some shuffling. Um, so I think that's the second floor. Great, thank you. And I'm gonna look for raised hands again. Chris. So I guess the computer, you can see the reference librarian if you get to the top of that stairs because the computer stations are low, I hope. Yes, yeah. Because we're gonna be directing people up there. The other question, Sharon, is about all these study rooms. Are they just people pop in as they want or are we gonna book them? We're gonna to have to book them. So, you know, this has been a, a very long conversation. Staff originally wanted these to be basically 
spaces with only three walls so that people could come and go as they needed. And the MBLC has pushed back and said, you really need to turn them into rooms and you really need to have them reserved. And um, like the four. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Anyone else? Okay. You yeah, know what so I we... forgot to do was show the, the vaulted ceilings. Oh. I'll do that as I share my screen again. Um, so on this floor, Adele, um, right here, this big old white space, uh, it says open to below. And that's because the first floor uh, room has got, it, it is double floor high. So these offices here, director, business manager, and whatever offices end up here will be overlooking into the team space. So all of this will be glass so that we can all see what's going on down there. Um, okay, and then up to the top floor. Let me, yeah, okay. So here's the bird's eye view of the top floor. It's only the boardroom, which is the Goodwin room. Uh, the only difference is now the Goodwin room will be reservable by the public uh, because the special collections, you know, the fine arts collection won't be located there anymore. And then there's the staff lounge spaces. That's what's here. This right here is the original staircase, uh, not original staircase, existing staircase. And, and this elevator here, that's the front small elevator. So as I mentioned in the beginning, here's the problem that, that removing this elevator is causing. If, if the architects are to remove this, it means this square here is where the elevator, the new elevator is going to be. If the architects need to bring the, that elevator up to this top floor, it means adding a whole nother corridor. Um, so so the elevator itself gets more expensive to build, as well as designing another, another structure that will abut this 1928 portion of the building. Uh, there are going to be, I, I'm not even sure what to call it. There are issues architecturally that Mass Historic will have. There are certain rules uh, that architects have to follow uh, when you are adding on a new building to an historic structure. There needs to be clear delineation. It cannot just smoothly flow. Like when, when, a, when a, an outsider is looking at the building, you need to clearly be able to see that that's the 1928 portion and that's the brand new portion. So, so that's one trick. The other is one of the rules is that nothing that we add on can be higher than this 1928, you know, the original building. And so I think the architects are nervous about whether or not you would be able to see that additional structure from Amity Street. So, so there will be a cost associated with all of this and the building committee will be talking about it on Tuesday. So that's the top floor. Great. Thank you. Anyone have any questions about the third the top floor? Um, okay. Oh, Adele. So, um, is there a problem with keeping that small elevator um, other than that it's taking up space? Oh, it's not even the space. It's just having to maintain. There's a cost. So it's the second either, elevator. Exactly. Yeah. It's either pay for it up front and then we've got one elevator and that's all we have to maintain. Or if we keep the second elevator, we're going to have to maintain that for eternity mm -hmm. or at least until the next building project in a hundred years. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and and I would I would also add that it's it's a cute little elevator, but it's not ideal um, if you are in any way have physical limitations. Um, it's it's not the best to, to, to wheel in and out of. Um, it's not ideal, but. Um, yeah. I've never been in it. <laughs> <laughs> there might be a reason. <laughs> Thank um, you. Yeah, Chris, you have a question? Yeah, I just can't remember. Or comment? Oh, sorry, you're, you're muted, Chris. Sorry, I can't remember if that elevator served any purpose on the second floor. 
or the first floor? I mean, other than getting to the boardroom, it really doesn't, isn't necessary for anything? It would just be necessary, yeah. Okay. Adele, do you have another question or is your hand just still up from before? Okay. Um, so those are the current schematics. Um, and um, for those of you who don't know, the um, outreach committee is creating a weekly newsletter um, while we're in this schematic design phase um, where you can find links and information about upcoming meetings, about where we are in the process, about community outreach. Um, so I would say in terms of upcoming meetings, um, Sharon referenced that there's a Jones Library Building Committee meeting on June 7th at 4.30 p.m. Um, and the main, I believe, topics of discussion are going to be the cost and impact um, on design to have gender neutral bathrooms and possibly eliminating the elevator in the 1928 portion of the building. Um, there's a design subcommittee meeting this Friday, June 3rd at 8.30 a.m., where they're going to have some discussions with the designers around um, exterior materials um, for the addition. Um, and then, as I said earlier, there's a um, upcoming meeting on June 8th, another uh, community forum to just sort of walk people through um, the community outreach and how um, the process about how it's um, uh, being reviewed <laughs> by, by all the committees and, um, and comments incorporated um, where, where they can be. So um, unless folks have, oh, Chris, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm still muted. Am I muted? Nope, you're good, we can hear you. No, I just had a question. I know this is probably way down the line, um, but Sharon, you were talking about the main reading room and I assume that the public will have some input on the interior design and the fixtures and that sort of thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I think that'll be important to have that beautiful historical, you know, pay, you know, tribute to the library as it is now. Yeah, thanks, Chris. That's that's actually a great question. Um, so that's so as I um, said at the beginning, in terms of where we are in the process, right. um, once we get schematic design done, then we move into um, design development, and that's going to run from August through December, and a lot more of things like the choices of you know interior and feel and design, a lot of that will continue to do public outreach through that process as well. Um, Okay, thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the question. Adele. Hey, um, did you say on June 8th when, what time that is? Uh, uh, if I did not, I apologize. June 8th is from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. And it's okay. going to be a virtual community forum just like this one. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. And I... um. If that if that location can be switched with the bathrooms on that first floor, um, I think that would be um, a good solution. <laughs> we'll Chris, see. Go, oh yes, no, great, thank you. I'm um, sorry, Chris. You have another question or comment? Another thing, and this goes back to Adele's first comments and to my uh, first comments about um, both special collections and the Burnett Gallery. I don't know where this fits in because it doesn't have to do with any specific room decor, but I just keep envisioning the kind of big bold posters they have outside of museums, art museums. I mean, something that would say somewhere in the Burnett Gallery, blah, 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 our special collections exhibit, blah, 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 running here through here. I don't know where that would go, but we, we need something like that to really make these these places exciting to patrons, I think. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. Adele, do you have another question? Oh, no, sorry. I keep forgetting to lower my hand. <laughs> no problem, no problem. Um, so we do have uh, six attendees, um, four of which who are not in the room, if anybody has a desire to come into the room and has any comments or questions, we would love to hear from you. Um, and also 
we'll talk more about this on June 8th, but there are many ways, uh, if you prefer not to be in a public forum like this, um, there are um, many ways that you can send questions or comments. One is uh, info at joneslibrary.org. Um, another is on the building project page, there's a submit a comment form. So you don't need an email for that. You can just submit a comment. Um, Amherst Talks, which is a collaboration with UMass. Um, you can also ask questions there. Um, you can also put up comments, sticky notes in the atrium of the library. Um, so there's no shortage of ways that you can um, give feedback or ask questions if uh, this is not a format that you're comfortable or, or, or it just occurs to you later after we end this. So, so I know we're scheduled to go later, but I, it's dinner time, and if people don't have more questions, this will be recorded. Um, there is a copy of the current schematic designs that Sharon just went over on the building project webpage. So if you go to the building project page, you can pull those up yourself and look at them. Um, and again, if questions or comments come up after you've done that, we would uh, invite that. And again, a reminder to folks for uh, the schematic design phase, we are collecting community comments through July 1st. After July 1st, um, the comments will shift more towards design development, um, which we will still do public uh, outreach, but as the, the designs develop, what can be impacted gets narrower and narrower as we move more toward a design that we can actually take out to bid and build, so. All right. See, Seeing nobody's hand up, um, I really appreciate everybody who took the time to come. Thank you, Sharon, for going through the design. Thank you, Angela, for setting this up, suggesting it, and putting this together. Um, thank you, everybody who attended, and um, we look forward to hearing from everybody. Take care. Take care. Bye. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Angela. <laughs>